I was sitting in my office in August of 2009, and I received a phone call from a member of my staff, and he saw what he estimated to be about 10,000 rape kits that was sitting in the storage area that he didn't think had been tested because he noticed that the seals were unbroken. So when she discovered these kits, or when her office discovered them, she had called fairly shortly thereafter and wanted to talk about where to go with that from here. Um, so we were able to be involved um, right from the beginning. Well, one of the things I'm proud of that we've done in the state is to come up with the rape kit tracking system. Uh, that's a huge advance. But we needed a long-term system statewide to help survivors across the state have a better system and a better system for our criminal justice um, organizations to pursue those cases. In many of the meetings that we were having regarding how to go forward with the kits, we repeatedly as a group kept coming back to the reality that you can order a package from your phone or computer on Amazon and then literally from the moment you order it until the moment you receive it, you can track it and see where that package is every step of the way. And that became our goal. We wanted to be able to do the same thing with the kits, that not only would everyone who's involved in the criminal justice system be able to see where in the process the kit is, but also that victims and survivors could see where in the process the kit is. So if a victim was sexually assaulted you know, a month ago, we knew that we wanted a mechanism for her to be able to look into a system of some kind and see where her kit was. So the kit is entered into the system by um, the sexual assault nurse examiner at the medical facility, so they obviously have access to the system. And then it is also accessed by law enforcement agencies. Additionally, lab personnel who are working on the kits have access, so they can log in and update information um, from those sexual assault kits pertaining to the results. Additionally, prosecutors have um, access so that they can track their cases that are related to those sexual assault kits and um, survivors, of course, so that they can track their kit personally and see at what point it is in the criminal justice process. Multiple organizations at the state level, the local level, all of us worked well together. Um, at the state level, I really need to compliment the Michigan State Police, the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, the Attorney General's Office. Then we had great partners, uh, the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office, but many local partners all came to bear on how we could do this work together. I want to thank the legislature for supporting this, providing the funding, but in particular we had uh, Senator Tanya Shootmaker, we had Representative Stephanie Chang and Representative Laura Cox who were very active in this process. It's been gratifying to hear that after all that they'd gone through and after how dramatically that sexual assault changed the course of their life, how meaningful it is to them that the state of Michigan has gone forward and done something to rectify this. This is really a victory for survivors. They need to be heard. They need to know that things are working in their behalf. They need to be able to follow this and know what's going on. Thank you.